Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today we played Coffee and a Mystery, not a card in the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. We made this fun gift bag. Now mine is Little Monkey designed. I am using the Stampin' Up! Little Monkey bundle. It is a photopolymer stamp set, 15 pieces, that you can bundle with the Monkey Builder Punch. When you buy these two items together, you save 10%. And we are going to put some yummy, groovy banana gummies in this bag. Have you ever walked down the aisle, candy aisle at the Dollar Tree and thought, oh my gosh, I have a stamp set that would go perfect with that candy. But these little like four or five ounce bags that you get at the Dollar Tree are kind of big. So this is the perfect solution for those fun, sweet treats that you just really find in the Dollar Tree and want to dress up with your <laughs> with your stamp set. So I've got groovy bananas and our bag is uh, made from a eight and a half by 11 piece of pool party cardstock. Got a template here for this bag. It'll be available photograph on the um, project sheet. If you want the project sheet, if you're on the blog, just look below the embedded video that you're probably currently watching. There will be a link that says click here for your project sheet. If you're watching on YouTube, then in the description below, you'll see project details. Click here. That'll take you to the blog post where you'll look for the printable project sheet below the embedded video. And that um, template and measurements will all be uh, right there in printable format for you. So you don't have to scramble to take notes here. We're going to put our cardstock in the Simply Score tool on the 11 inch side and we're going to score at one half, at two and a quarter, five and three quarters, seven and a half. Then we're going to rotate to the right and we're going to score at one and three quarters and seven and three quarters. Let's work the score lines with the bone folder and we'll trim it according to the template. You might notice when you watch my videos that I score and then fold inside out before I turn it around and fold right side in. And this score and fold right here is the perfect example of why I do that. You can see that there's kind of a fuzzy little crackled edge on this fold and that just happens with cardstock especially if it happens to be a um, dry environment and the fibers in the card will sometimes stretch or break it's unavoidable and it's very obvious if you have a printed product like if you're doing with designer series paper because then the white core would show through so that's the reason behind scoring and then folding inside out and then right side in. Now, if you look at this score line, I hope the camera's picking it up. It's perfectly smooth. So that cracking, those fibers stretching is on the inside of our box when we do this extra step. It is an extra step, but it just will give you a neater finished project. So we're gonna work these both ways, right side in now, and then let's trim. So we've got the glue tab in our left hand and we're going to cut an angle and then we're going to cut at an angle and take out this long rectangle. Then at the top of the glue tab, we're going to cut at an angle and then a very slight angle, get rid of the score line. Now back to the bottom of the box, the squares are glue or the inside tabs so we can cut those at an angle so they tuck nicer. And then the edges of these rectangles are your outside tabs and they're gonna be seen. So we wanna cut those nice and straight right along the score. So straight cut and then a slight angle. We're turning this square tab into a trapezoid, which makes the bottom of the box, or in this case, the bag close a little bit cleaner and straight cut along the rectangle. Now at the top, we're just gonna do very small angle cuts, angle, 
and then take a little tiny triangle and remove the score. This is going to fold in to reinforce the top of the bag and hold your ribbon securely. So you don't want this all bunching up at the corners of your bag. If you take a little bit of the bulk out here, you'll have cleaner corners inside. All right, so that is our bag. Let's get our ribbon handles now and our designer series paper. Our ribbon handles are the Cotton Ribbon Combo Pack. They're petal pink. This is on clearance right now, and the price is unbelievable. $3.20, I think, for 10 yards of ribbon. You get the uh, petal pink and misty moonlight in one convenient package. And both are current colors that are um, stamp and tons of stamp out designer series paper and things like that. So it's a great value. Marissa Alvarez.stampinup.net and then click shop and then click on specials and clearance rack and you can see if some of this is still available. We're going to pair that up with the new inked botanicals designer series paper and these are five and three quarters by three and one quarter. Let's glue the designer series paper to the outside of the box. And these panels will fit centered right in the front and back. Now we've clearly indicated front and back, so let's punch some holes for our ribbon. We want for our handles to line up nice, so we're gonna grab a ruler, a pen, and a 1 8 inch hole punch. To mark for the ribbon handles, you wanna lay your ribbon across the score line, or your ruler across the score line, and the front of this bag is three and a half inches. You wanna mark on the fold at three quarters of an inch, and at two and three quarters. So it's three quarters of an inch from this side, three quarters of an inch from this side. They're nice and even on the panel and they're gonna match up front to back when you slide your ruler over and then mark again, three quarters of an inch and two and three quarters. All right, let's grab our punch. We're gonna punch those marks out. All right, now our bag is ready to get some handles. We want to make sure that we give our handles every opportunity to stay and to hold the weight, whatever it is that we put in this bag. So we're gonna to go to the inside of this bag. We're gonna run tear and tape adhesive. You want a nice strong adhesive here across each of these panels. And I do stop and tear at the corners because we've slightly beveled this and we don't want to make sticky corners. Okay, so pick up, don't just run it all the way across because then if you've got adhesive in this little gap, you're gonna have a sticky corner. But you want a little gap here so that it doesn't all bulk up against the fold. So there is always a method to the madness. Now we're gonna flip this glue tab while we've got the tear and tape going, and we're gonna run a nice long strip kind of against the folds there. And then this panel here, we're gonna run some equal signs two parallel lines of tear and tape. Now I'm gonna take the adhesive liner off of the front and back panels. I find that eight inches of ribbon makes a nice length of handle, even if you're using wider ribbon. So we're gonna thread through this hole and then pull down just enough ribbon keeping it nice and flat here at this stage to adhere 
in the tear and tape but still be covered by the flap. And if you want to at this point, it's not a bad idea, you can take your bone folder and just burnish that ribbon. Now you wanna bring this up and around without twisting it. Otherwise you'll have curly twisty handles and then thread in from the front again and to the back. All right, so we're gonna make sure our handle isn't all twisted up. And then we're going to burnish the ribbon into the tear and tape again. All right, let's do the other handle. Same procedure. All right, our handles are on. Now, our goal in life is to make sure that this little bag can handle the weight and the handles are secure. So we're gonna add more adhesive. And we're gonna use a lot, but that's okay. We're gonna put adhesive so that it overlaps the first strip of adhesive and sandwiches those ribbons in again, but isn't so low that this flap won't cover it entirely. All right, so we're actually um, making two lines, a wider line of adhesive for the flap and sandwiching that ribbon front and back. Now again, bone folder is very handy here before you remove the liner. Go ahead and burnish so that adhesive really gets down in the crevices of those ribbon. All right, now we can assemble our box. We're going to remove the liner on the flap panels, but don't close all the flaps yet because we're also going to remove the liner from the side glue tab. We wanna make sure that this is tucked in before we close the flaps, just to make sure that we cover this edge. All right, so we're going to make our box. Line this up, get it nice and straight. Once you've got that nice and straight, burnish it. Then make sure your handles don't get stuck in the box. You're gonna close up these inside pieces, making a nice secure reinforced handle and a beautiful finished edge. You see that? Lay your box flat, grab your bone folder again, and just gently, but firmly, you don't wanna um, wrinkle up your cardstock and make a mess here or scratch into it and emboss a pattern but you do want to burnish well so that that adhesive that you put holds those handles and holds these layers of cardstock this bag is meant to be filled enjoyed gifted reused we want to make sure that it's nice and sturdy and those handles are secure now to the bottom of the box, super simple. Gonna fold in, you're folding the back to the front and then the front to the back, which brings all the seams up the back of the box. So don't confuse the back for the front when you start decorating because you don't want your seams in front. Square this up really nice. You don't want a wonky doodle box. And then I like to burnish from the inside. Again, your bone folder is gonna come in really handy here. So just burnish those two adhesive lines. All right, there's our gift bag. Is that not the cutest gift bag? It's nice and sturdy, handles are secure. It's a great little tote and it holds lots of your bigger treats. I've got my little groovy banana. So feel free to roam the candy aisle of the Dollar Tree, picking up those, those four and five ounce uh, bags of candies or your theater boxes. A lot of those theater boxes fit in here, two theater boxes of candy. So really handy um, template and idea to have on hand. All right, I'm gonna take a little square of tissue paper now here and just fold so that all the 
points are separate from each other. And I like to fold in. And I'm making a little swoopy end triangle. And then we'll just pop that in front. And that finishes our bag just nicely. All right, let's do some stamping now. I love my little monkey. All right, let's get an example. There we go. Got some crushed curry right here and pecan pie, some calypso coral, a little bit of lost lagoon and pool party cardstock scraps. Little monkey is photopolymer, so we're gonna grab a stamp and pierce mat and memento ink. We're gonna do all of our stamping on colored cardstock with memento ink, which is gonna give us this cool, um, bold, solid effect. We're gonna start with our little monkey and we're gonna make sure that we have the punch upside down and in our workspace so that we can verify before we stamp. It'll save you a lot of trouble trying to get images in the punch or a lot of trouble stamping the wrong image <laughs> because there is another little monkey that faces the opposite direction. And if you don't have your punch face up, you could accidentally grab the other monkey, stamp a bunch of them thinking that you're gonna punch them out <laughs> but then realize that it's the other monkey that fits the punch. So we're always looking at our punch when we're using a builder punch and a stamp set together to make sure that we've got the right image and we can actually get it physically into the punch without any gymnastics to get it punched out. All right, so there's our monkey. And we need a little bit of very vanilla here. We're gonna do the monkey's face with some very vanilla so I'm going to protect my Stamp and Pierce mat here because we're going to stamp off the edge. I'm going to ink Mikey's face and then stamp low so that I can get it into the punch because we can punch out this little face. And then we're also going to stamp a banana. There's a closed banana and an open banana. We need an open banana. Haha. -ha. <laughs> so cute. All right, set those aside. We're letting everything dry a second before we put it into the punch or before we fussy cut it. We've got a little scrap of pool party here. Let's do our fern leaf. We've got a scrap of Lost Lagoon. We're gonna do our leaves for our tree. And again, I'm going to cover my space or my mat and I'm going to just stamp the leaves and then the leaves because we're going to cut those out and get a brown branch. can bring our pecan pie back in here and stamp the branch one more time. To our lagoon, we're going to stamp a couple of these tropical leaves. Now for bananas, let me slide this aside for just a minute. We want to grab a paper trimmer. Okay, we're taking into account the orientation of the punch again. And we need three bananas. So the easiest way to get three bananas with the least amount of waste. These builder punches can be big time paper wasters. So again, just thinking about it a little bit before you do your stamping will help you conserve paper and get the best results when you go to punch without having to restamp or use your scissors or your take your pick tool or a handle to try to get to the item that you stamped. So we're gonna take a one inch scrap of crushed curry 
and we're going to stamp our bananas. We need three of them, so we're gonna start from the right, and we're gonna stamp our bananas three in a row. We can do them even pretty close together, and that way we get our little bananas without a whole bunch of wasted paper torn up by the monkey's legs or face on the punch. All right, so let me show you what I'm saying now. Last thing we want to do is, so this is going to be our handle to feed in. So we know our little banana guy, the open guy, is going to be safe if we stamp it at this end of the strip. All right, now we're going to switch to punching. Let me find the cap for this ink. We don't want anything to get inky that shouldn't be inky. And then we're going to start with the first things that we punched because the, the ink will be dry. Or the first things that we stamped because the ink will be dry. So here we go. Monkey, line up. Now, my advice to you with the monkey is to check different landmarks. I tend to try to line up legs and tail first, but there is a um, chance that you got the legs and the tail pretty well lined up and this ear will get to... Um, much of a border and this one will get cut off. So check your landmarks before you punch. Legs, tail, ears. Make sure you've got an equal, then punch. Has the no face is next. <laughs> See, we are gonna hold this corner to punch and hopefully, no, we're not gonna make it. We're gonna, we're gonna destroy our little banana. That's okay, we're gonna have to stamp another little banana. But what we're gonna do is to still get it out of the same piece, we're gonna just stamp it on our little monkey cutout. See, even with the best planning, these builder punches can sometimes chew up something and waste some cardstock, but we're not gonna waste it. Got a, we got a banana monkey here now. All right, then our bananas, let me show you that. So we've set ourselves up for success here. We can punch a banana. The next one isn't harmed. Slide that one in. And then the only thing that's getting cut to shreds is the scrap from the one that we previously punched. And trust me, these little bananas make the cutest little paper embellishments on your card. You're going to want to cut, make strips of bananas and punch them all out because they're really an adorable way to add some interest to the project. And they're a very affordable way to add interest to the project because you can just use up your little one inch scraps. Everybody who has been paper crafting for any time at all has bunches of paper strips that are the scraps from cutting other shapes. So we're gonna cut out all of our banana and our leaves. We'll just fussy cut. When I do the banana, I cut directly on the line where the crushed curry is gonna meet the very vanilla and then cut out the peel and because the punch leaves a little line of cardstock all the way around the monkey, we want to bring that consistency to the rest of the items we're cutting out by hand. So we'll leave a little yellow border, except for where you're gonna piece the two parts together. Now when you do this open banana, you can just lop off all the vanilla part of the peel but keep in mind that you want a place to glue the peel on. So leave some, then you're going to go up and around the banana, leaving a little vanilla edge, just like the face has a little vanilla edge around the stamp line. The bananas that are not open have a little line around. That's how the punch works, so we're gonna keep consistent in our cutting. We're gonna keep consistent in our cutting on the leaves and the branch also. So go ahead and give all these items a quick little fussy cut. 
All right, guys, you can see I've got all my bits fussy cut, and I even went through and put a little bit of dimensionals on where we need dimensionals. But before we can go any further there, we need to add the face on our monkey and assemble our banana. So I like to put the adhesive on the monkey's face, pick up a little bit on the end of the banana there where we left a glue tab. Now we can share the glue, which will minimize the mess, and just assemble. So we've got now an open two-tone banana, and we've got a monkey with a face. And we've kept it nice and tidy. All right, let's slide our bits for just a minute because we have a few more things to prepare. On this box, I have a cool little textured element here that gives you a pop of that crushed curry. And I'm just gonna show you what I did because you can get two of these little elements for one. It's a little two for one trick. So I took the, I took the decorative circle punch and cut one from crushed curry. Then I took this like star weave pattern embossing folder. This is from the 3D Basics embossing folders. And I embossed the decorative circle. Once it came out from the embossing folder, I cut it in half. So now we've got two little texture elements that we can use on projects. This is a great little technique to add a pop of color with very little expense, with very little bulk, but with a huge lot of impact. Then we also die cut a couple of shapes ahead here. I've got this banner for the sentiment, and this one was cut using the new nested essentials dies. It's the second from smallest banner. And I have in very vanilla a tag. This is the largest with the clip corners from the Taylor Made Tags dies. All right, let's stamp our sentiment on. Put this with our bits for a minute. Get our ink pad and stamp and pierce mat back in here. All right, I'm bananas about you. Can't even resist anything punny. So of course I had to have this bundle. I'm bananas about you. We're gonna put that to the left, kind of towards the fishtail side of our banner so we have room to punch a little hole. Hee <laughs> love it. All right. We've got one more bit of stamping to do, but we're gonna change our ink pad. I love these jungle leaves, but I feel like a tropical flower kind of anchors them. So we're gonna take some Calypso Coral cardstock and our Petal Park Builder Punch. We're going to cut ourselves one of these medium flowers. Got our medium flower from Calypso Coral. Now we're gonna protect our work surface. We're gonna grab the vines from Little Monkey. We're gonna put both vines on one block. So there's these two little vine stamps. We're gonna take some Calypso Coral ink, our little vines, and we're gonna stamp on the flower to give it some texture. With everything else having such boldness, I thought a little bit of texture here would go a very long way. So there it is. Let's press the center of that with the cap end of the Take Your Pick tool, which will give it a nice little cup shape. And let's make a tag. Here's our very vanilla tag, our decorative circle, and I'm bananas about you. I'm going to grab a centering ruler because I can't see center before I punch a hole in my little banner tag. Stampin' Up! provides a centering ruler on the Simply Score tool and on the grid paper. So there's some options there for you for a centering rule, ruler. I'm going to lay my little banner tag on the zero, make sure that the edges are center, and then I'm gonna make a little mark where I'm gonna punch a hole. 
and I just have to do that for everything um, that requires centering because my eyes are not on center so I'm glad that there's always a centering ruler very handy in my regular um, than the tools that I use regularly now we're going to take one eighth inch punch and turn this one into a tag also got a little bit of liquid glue I'm going to run it down the edge of our textured element and we're going to put this near the bottom of the right side of the tag we're just going to glue that right on there and it just adds such a nice pop of color and a cool texture and we're going to take um, bananas about you a little bit of glue on the tag and then line up the holes of the tag and the banner and just glue that one down our branch and leaves you see that I cut the leaves out and in sets of two all right so we've got the Lost Lagoon leaves and the pecan pie branch. Put the adhesive in the center of the branch because it's going to extend a little bit past the edges of the tag. Leave a little room for your flowers and leaves down at the bottom. Got my littlest set of leaves. We can add that one to the tag got my monkey let's get that on the tag so cute now if you want to you can draw little pink cheeks on your monkey or the monkey builder punch has a little um, section where you can do ears you can punch ears so you can put little vanilla ears you can make these a bit more detailed if you want to our banana this little guy is going to need a strip of dimensional adhesive. Hmm, I wonder if one of these little edges will work. Here we go. Pop the banana. Haha, <laughs> so cute. Got a piece of designer series paper here. This is also from that Inked Botanicals. It's two by four, and we're gonna dovetail one side of the paper. I love to use my Taylor Tag Punch. You can use a square punch, same way, just turn it so that you're getting one of the points, or you can use your scissors to do that. Let's glue it to our box. Be careful about your glue placement. You don't wanna to get too close to the banner end. It's going to run about a tiny bit lower than center on your box and I've got it from the corner so it goes past the designer series paper and only just sticks out a little bit now our tag needs some ribbon we're going to go back to that cotton ribbon get some more and thread our tag tie a bow I do the ribbon on the spool thread from the front to the back. You want to pull about thumb to index finger is usually pretty good for this. We're going to loop from the bottom, swoop over the top, tuck that space that your finger's holding and pull. You get a perfect bow every time. The ears are up, the tails are down. Hold the center knot or Hold the opposite loop and you can adjust the size, give it a little finesse. And then we can trim it from the spool. And there is no waste on this side because we're cutting it right off the spool. And on this side, all we do is correct the angle and clean up that edge that we put through the tail. So there it is, and that's all we're throwing away. So really good technique to get more bang for your ribbon buck. We're gonna need dimensionals. Let's get this project. Since it's a project and not a card, we're gonna double, triple dimensionals. I love the bump, and we can do that when we're not putting it through the mail. So I'm gonna get a little generous here with my 
dimensionals. Be careful about where you put your dimensionals because we got a little overhang there on our greeting tag. And nobody likes a saggy middle, so put one right in the middle. Pop the tag. Leave room for your flowers at the bottom. I like a little angle. I think everything going a little jaunty just works with the personalities of these of these monkeys. Got some bananas here. Got one with adhesive kind of right on the middle, dimensional adhesive. One with dimensional adhesive a little bit on the bottom because it's going to overlap the tag here on the top and then one here with a little bit of adhesive on the top. I'm going to add a drop of liquid glue on the bottom. Don't those just make the cutest little embellishments? I love it. Our, the rest of our leaves are peel and stick. So let's go ahead and do that. This one's overlapping my little yellow uh, label a little bit more than on the sample. So I'm gonna use flat adhesive so that my leaves are at the same level. My tropical leaves. I've got one with a little dimensional on the end. I'm gonna do a little liquid glue and we're gonna put a little dab of liquid glue. I'm gonna put these guys together so that they're like this, liquid glue, dimensional, because it's the tag is already on dimensional, so we want to support this end of the leaf. This little guy, same thing. We want to support this end of the leaf with dimensionals because the tag is bumped up. Do a little bit of liquid glue at the stem end, overlap. And your flower is next. You can add a little bit of liquid glue and give it some time to grab or put a mini glue dot right there your choice. I'm going to embellish my bag. No project is complete without a little bit of bling. I love these neutral adhesive backed sequins with this inked and tiled paper and with the monkeys. The colors are wonderful no matter what theme you pick up on the inked botanicals. But the tones are really awesome with those natural colors of your monkey images too. So really a great embellishment. You get 200 and I think they're 750. So they're also a pretty good value. I've got the copper ones on our original sample here. So let's go ahead and do, do I want gold or the brown ones? I think I'm going to go hmm. decisions. Gold. All right. Final answer. Gold. going to put a big one. And then a big one over here. I like the gold with the bananas. And a big one over here. All right, there is our I'm Bananas About You Jumbo Treat bag. If you've got any questions about the project, you can email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. To shop Stamp It Up 24-7, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampitup.net and click shop. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.